To thee we come, O Lord our God, before thine altar, Father. Thou knowest best our yearning hearts, this supplication answer. Live come from what to thy people, Lord. Bless us, O God, O Father, bless our toil. Under thy mercy we stand prepared to serve thee with devotion. Begin with strength of blood or tears for emancipation. For we thy people are, O Lord, save us, O Please be seated. Good morning and first of all, a very Merry Christmas and blessings as we gather at the crush of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. Good morning. For the penance of your confession, I ask that you please, for the next three evenings, concentrate upon the wisdom that we find in today's readings. And now let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Fernanda and John, and the blessings of your family. Having confessed your sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I did absolve you of your sins that you have confessed in this sacrament of penance. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, whose authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, 
mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Lord is God and has given us light whose love endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, the incarnation of your only begotten Son has banished the darkness of this world. Through his wondrous birth, drive the darkness of sin from us and brighten our hearts with the glory of your grace. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. John, would you please proclaim the word? See, the Lord proclaims to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, your Savior comes. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called frequented, a city that is not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Light dawns for the just, gladness for the honest of heart. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah. With the burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips. Through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to who say hate Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that they had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Niek benja pafalani Jesus Christus. Na vieki vieku. Amen. When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, and because of any righteous deeds we have done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth. These words are taken this morning from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, all of us could have slept in this morning, as I think sometimes I would have loved. I got to bed a little bit before quarter to twelve and I was up at two. I just could not sleep. So I have a little joke with the Lord and I said, Lord, if you want me up, I'm up. And so, I usually start with a cup of coffee and I sit in front of my computer after prayer and I think about what Christmas means to me. You know, isn't it interesting that of all the books that we find in the New Testament, the letter of St. Paul to Titus is one of the shortest. You know, we think of St. Paul as writing his letters to the Corinthians, to the Galatians, to the Philippians. Seventeen books of the New Testament. But who was Titus? He was a simple individual who worked with Paul. He was a missionary. He came 
and his ministry was to serve those in the Christian community in Crete. He was there to spread the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And though not as eloquent as St. Paul to the Corinthians or some of the other letters, we find that St. Paul took a special time to talk to Titus. You know, throughout the entire liturgical year, we hear of Titus during the Christmas season. And I went over the words early this morning, and I would love to be able to share with you and for you in a silent prayer to think of the wisdom of Paul to a fellow worker in the Christian church. You know, Paul said, Beloved, when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the path of rebirth and renewed by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. You know, Martin Luther, the great religious reformer, said no matter what we do, we cannot obtain the grace by which we are saved. It is only in the justification by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Martin Luther was to reform the church and lead a reformation by which other great thinkers and theologians such as John Hus, Wycliffe, Knox, that actually came forth with the same principle that it is not what we do, but rather what we feel within our hearts. It is known as the justification of faith. And so we gather on this Christmas day before the crash that we blessed. And as I said last night, at the end of service, we all come to the crash with our own thoughts and prayers for those who have lost loved ones, for those who seek hope, for those who pray for peace, that we come unto the Christ child. I may have shared with you, but I know that I talked to the people in Westfield yesterday, that there are three births that take place. The first one is what we observe in the crash, the innocence, and the love that God had that he shared with us an infant that brings about our own salvation the second birth is what we proclaim that we believe that Christ will return this is what the early church fathers proclaimed in the gathering in 324 AD by which we know the Council of Nicaea, which was the first ecumenical church councils of the undivided church. 
It is said that the third birth takes place within each and every single one of us. It is the birth of Christ who comes in the innocence and by which we are saved by our relationship with him. Christ said not only to his apostles, but he said to each and every single one of us, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you to go forth and produce fruit unto the Father. And so even as we view the infant Jesus, we realize that we all have a mission. That out of the hope that the patriarchs and the prophets had, out of the peace that people seek, out of the joy that is found in welcoming an infant, and it is out of love that we understand that this came as a divine mission that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Paul talks about how rich we are that the grace of God has poured forth unto us by Jesus Christ. We are so fortunate that we have before us the Word of God. In the early days they did not have this luxury by which we may be able to see the beginnings of the Lord Jesus Christ, His life and His mission, that led 33 years later to die upon the cross. We say that the greatest of all are dependent upon each other. We begin in this new liturgical year of the solemnity of the nativity of our Lord and we will follow with the second greatest of all Christian liturgy, the solemnity of the resurrection of our Lord. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the word by which each and every single one of us are baptized, marked, and set aside. And so my dear brothers and sisters, as we gather on this Christmas day, in which we share with loved ones and family, that we realize that the very life that we have before us continues. And that Christian is seen, and that Christians are seen in that great hope. And that the celebration of Christmas is seen in the eyes of our children and grandchildren. For God so loved the world. That he, only, that he sent his only begotten Son. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by, by us now and forevermore. Amen.
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For a child has been born for us a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Please be seated. Thank you. 
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise of your name, for our benefit and that of all the soul of your church. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, accept our gifts on this joyful feast of our salvation by our communion with God made man. May we become more like him who joins our lives in yours. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy be with you and also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You sent to us Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mother Mary, most holy. We have come to know and love you as our perfect Father through the revealed mysteries of your incarnate word. We praise you this day, Father, and through your Son, now made visible, long to be with you, our unseen God. And though we are unable to see you, we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated and share with me the canon of the Mass. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy catholic church that you would guide it in peace defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests especially anthony our prime bishop and paul our bishop and all who profess the true orthodox and catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles remember O oh lord your servants my brothers and sisters, as we gather in prayer, let us pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us pray this day for peace. May we pray most humbly for all abused and neglected children in our world, all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence both here and abroad may we give our thanks to god for the blessings of doctors and nurses first responders police and fire and those in the ems let us most humbly pray this day for all victims of violence and may we give God our thanks for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray that God would return them unto their families safe and sound. 
And Father, we pray for all here present and their loved ones in whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for their hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray this day, amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At this solemn, solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, <clears throat> after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same. Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, remember your servants and all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace.
to these souls, Lord, and all who rest on Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, delight, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some heart and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and in following divine institution, we say with confidence, And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, graciously grant peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, 
through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you. Our Lord and our God, grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord. Receive the body of the Lord.
verse. Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion, shout for joy. O daughter Jerusalem, see your king shall come to you. A just savior is he. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we receive the Holy Eucharist with faith and joy as we celebrate the birthday of your Son. Increase our understanding of the riches you have revealed in him. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. be pleasing to you most holy trinity and grant that the sacrifice which we the unworthy have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for our, ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen, amen. may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe. <clears throat> but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world he was in the world and through him the world was made yet the world did not know who he was to his own he came yet his own did not accept him any who did accept him he empowered to become children of god these are they who believe in his name who are begotten not by blood nor by cardinal desire nor by man's willing it but by god the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the father filled with enduring love thanks, thanks be to god, god.
and for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers and sisters, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.